Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. My name is Joseph and I'll be your instructor for this tutorial where we deal with thermal comfort in the theater room. The agenda for today looks as follows. I will again show you what you're going to learn, what steps are involved in the simulation. I will describe to you these ominous parameters called PPD as well as PMV. And at the end of course, I will go step by step through the demo. So what are you going to learn? In this tutorial, you are going to learn how to properly prepare the geometry to make it usable for the simulation. The simulation type today will be a convective heat transfer analysis. I will show you how you can properly assign boundary conditions for these type of simulations. And last but not least, we again have a look at post-processing, but I will also show you how you can make sense of the PMV and PBD parameters, which we will discuss in a few seconds. The underlying equation that is solved for these type of simulation problems is the so-called Navier-Stokes equation. If you have seen it before, feel free to skip ahead. It's basically nothing else than Newton's second law of motion. So steps in the simulation. First of all, we have the pre-processing step. This is followed by the so-called processing step, where we specify boundary conditions, numerical settings and so on. And in the end, we are trying to make sense of the generated data, which is often called post-processing. So what are these ominous parameters PPD as well as PMV? Let's start with PMV. So PMV is an index that aims to predict the mean value of votes of a group of occupants on a seven point thermal sensation scale, which is depicted on the slide. Minus three is very cold as you can see, and plus three is very hot. So now the thermal equilibrium is obtained when an occupant's internal heat production is the same as its heat loss. So that's the thermal equilibrium. The heat balance of an individual can be influenced by levels of physical activity or clothing insulation, for example, as well as the parameters of the thermal environment. Let me give you an example. Thermal sensation is generally perceived as better when occupants of a space have control over indoor temperature. That means natural ventilation through opening or closing a window, for example, because this helps to alleviate high occupant thermal expectations on a mechanical ventilation system. Okay, that was PMV. Now what is PBD and how is it related to PMV? So through PMV, we can predict the thermal sensation of a population. But this actually doesn't paint the whole picture. We also need to consider the level of satisfaction of the occupants in the space to basically get a more holistic idea of if and how thermal comfort can be achieved. For this, a person called Funga developed another equation to relate the PMV to the predicted percentage of dissatisfied, which we call PPD. Once we have calculated the PMV, the PPD, or index that establishes a quantitative prediction of the percentage of thermally dissatisfied occupants, that means is it too warm or is it too cold, can be determined. PPD essentially gives the percentage of people predicted to experience local discomfort. The main factors causing local discomfort are unwanted cooling or heating of an occupant's body. So the common contributing factors are drafts, for example, abnormally high vertical temperature differences between the ankles and head, and or floor temperature. So here, just a quick summary for you to give you some practical advice. We have two standards. On one side, we have ASHRAE 55, and on the other side, we have ISO 7730. For ASHRAE 55, we said that the PMV value should be between minus 0.5 to plus 0.5. For the ISO 7730 standard, we said that the hard limit is from minus 2 to plus 2. For existing buildings, it's from minus 0.7 to plus 0.7, and for new buildings, it's from minus 0.5 to plus 0.5. Regarding the PPD, we say that it's between 5% and 100%. That's actually depending on the calculated PMV. To comply with the standards, we say that actually no point in space should be above 20% PPD. So with that being said, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us via the forum. And I will also link down a blog post by my colleague Sebastian, who has written an excellent blog post regarding this topic, which goes in a bit more detail when it comes to PMV, PPD, what these parameters actually mean and how you can actually make sense out of them. So with that being said, we will jump straight into the demo right now and let's get started. Hey, and welcome to the workbench. So as you can see here, we have the CAD geometry. And what we are going to do first is to use the flow volume extraction tool. For that, we click on the context menu of our geometry, go to add geometry operation, and then click closed inner region. I deactivate this form to select the inner face to actually close the region that I want to close. I can reactivate it and select this face. I'll start the operation. After a few seconds, you can see that the flow extraction operation has closed the inner region into a solid domain. 
So after around a minute, the operation has been finished. What we'll do next is to create a simulation. In this case, we said that we wanted to do a convective heat transfer analysis. So we click on create simulation. What we want to do is we want to set the turbulence model to K omega SST. And we want to have a look at it steady state. Once that is done, you can save it, go to model. Because gravity is quite important in this type of simulation, we'll set the gravity to minus 9.81 because it's acting in the negative y direction. After that, we go to material, select air, apply it, and the whole region is assigned to this material. We click save. We don't do anything to the initial conditions. Usually, if we estimate these initial conditions correctly, the solution will usually converge faster. But we skip that for now. As for boundary conditions, I'll choose the velocity inlet which is actually the duct inlet in this case, I'll set it to a flow rate with a value of 0.11 kilogram per second. And I go to Kelvin, which is 289 Kelvin. And these small faces will be selected right here. I'm good to go, so I can save this. And of course, I want to have a duct outlet as well. So I select pressure outlet, go to this face right here, and we say that this is 1.01 to the power of 5 pascals. I click enter, click enter again, and our pressure outlet has been defined. What we want to do next is to specify a wall boundary condition with 303 Kelvin as a fixed temperature. For that, let me just rotate the geometry. Let me select box, select these ducts right here. And I click invert selection and I assign a wall boundary condition to it with no slip, wall function, fixed value, and as we said, a temperature of 303 Kelvin. Enter, enter again, and it has been set. So I can do a little trick here now for the next boundary condition. So I click on wall, say height assignment, then I go to boundary conditions, add another wall, and say everything is the same, except here we say zero gradient, and then we say um, assign all visible. There you go, 65 faces. What you have to make sure is that the inlet and outlet faces are deselected. That's what we do right now and we save this boundary condition. Next, we can skip the numerics and go straight to simulation control, which looks quite good, except we want to do 2000 iterations, one second delta t. Actually, it's not a time because it's steady state analysis. It's rather a iteration step. So one of two iterations and we do 2000 iterations. We can increase the number of course to 32 or 64, but only if we have a pro account. So if you have a community plan, you can only have the automatic feature right here. Right interval will be 2000. So we're interested in the end state and we should increase this time to 120,000. As for the mesh settings, we said that we want to have a hex dominant. We can say hex dominant only. So we have hex dominant selected. Next is meshing mode, which is internal. We say automatic mesh sizing. We say here moderate size, no automatic boundary layers. And if we have a pro feature, we can select 32 cores, for example. That's what I've already done. And once the mesh has been finished, you can cut through your mesh and see if you are happy with the results and eventually make adaptions to it. If you're happy with the mesh, you can start your simulation run, which I already have done. So you can see it right here, it has been finished. And what I do now is I have taken some screenshots because it took quite a long time to load the post-processing results for me. So I took some screenshots from our PMV and PPD parameters, which we have defined by the way, in the result control item. So here, before you run the simulation, you go to result control, go to field calculations and choose this thermal comfort parameters. And there you have different coefficients metabolic rate and air humidity. And if you want to set these parameters, there's an excellent post in our documentation, which explains what these actually mean, these parameters. So once you have selected this result control item and run the result afterwards, so you first have to select the field calculation and then run the simulation. You cannot run the simulation and then afterwards set the field calculation, expecting the solver to know what these parameters actually look like. So before you run the simulation, please, add this thermal comfort parameters to your result control. I've done that. So here's my PMV and PBD screenshot. What you can see is that no parameter 
shows compliance with the standards that we have discussed on the slides. So usually we have a happy end in some of the simulation tutorials, but in this case, we really have to redesign or improve our CAD geometry in order to comply with the standards. I hope that was useful to you. If you liked the tutorial, please let me know. And if you want to see more in the future, of course, let me know as well. If you have any questions, reach out to us via the forum or post your question down under the video. With that being said, as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.